Hello, my name is Maya Goslin, and I'm the owner of a company called SIP. I educate people about wine in their homes and businesses. I'm also a consultant, an editor, and a wine director. My whole approach to education is to make it fun, friendly, and relaxed, no pretentiousness at all. Since these days I can't get into my normal places where I would be bringing my love for wine, uh, homes, businesses, and restaurants, I've decided to launch a series called Wine Sessions in My Dining Room. Uh, my themes are going to range. I'll probably post one or two a week. They're going to range from maybe Chardonnay 101 to a tour of Tuscany to a bubbly breakdown, sparkling wines. But for purposes of today, I've decided to do my favorite five wines that are under $15. I think everybody is budget conscious right now. So this is my quick pick of my current favorites. And just be forewarned, my favorite list changes very quickly. So I will start off with a sparkling wine. I love Bubbles. This is one of my all-time favorites. This is from my friends with 90 plus sellers. This is their Lot 49 Sparkling Rosé. It's from Italy. It's not a Prosecco, but it's made in the same style as a Prosecco with a method called Charmant or Tank Method. 100% Pinot Noir. Look at those beautiful, pretty bubbles. Don't be deceived by the pink. Um, people still have this misconception that pink wines are somehow uh, overly delicate or sweet. Neither is the case here. Pinot Noir is a grape of some substance. There's a lot of body to this. It's very elegant. It has a lot of red fruit notes, strawberry, watermelon maybe in there. Um, it's crisp and dry. Pink doesn't equal sweet like I just said. Um, root, which is on the label here, indicates that this is a dry wine, which means that there's probably between 6 to 12 grams of sugar in this particular one per liter. So dry is the absence of sweetness. Uh, most of the time, there's a, you can expect about six grams per, per liter for a brute style of wine. I love bubbles because they're fun and festive, but also they're fantastic with foods. Uh, this would be perfect with smoked salmon, any spring foods really. Um, you can drink this year round. I find that it goes really nicely with holiday meals as well. It's just absolutely delicious. And this is in the under $13 category. This is usually maybe between 11 to $13, I find. The next wine up is one of my hidden gems. Um, I have a particular skill set, I call it a superpower, of finding fantastic high quality wines that don't cost a lot of money. This is a Muscadet from the Loire Valley, the Vignoble La Chateau. Muscadet is a style of wine, it's an appellation in the Loire, um, and the grape itself is called Melon de Bourgogne which is a pretty bland sounding word. Uh, Muscadet sounds much nicer. Um, this is dry. Again, just like the brute style of sparkling wine, this is a dry, crisp, light white wine, very mineral driven. And when I say minerality, there's a lot of minerality in the soil in general in the Loire Valley. What is minerals? It's if you were to think of chalkiness or uh, maybe a little bit of salinity or even uh, rocks that were in the ocean and you sort of tasted that saltiness on a rock. That's the perfect example of minerality. When you taste this also, you get a lot of citrus, maybe some crisp apple. Um, the Muscadets that you want to look for are always going to be from Muscadet Sevre in Maine. They produce better Muscadets overall. And you always want to see Surly on that label. That means that this wine has been aged on the leaves, which are the spent yeast cells that imparts sort of almost a creaminess to the wine. It gives it a little bit of texture as well. One of the beautiful things about a Muscadet is you can pick up that saltiness that I was talking about earlier because the Loire is a real maritime climate, especially Muscadet. And when there's salt water in the air, it sort of gets into the canopies and it imparts its that saltiness into the soil, into this wine. It isn't salty, but there's that element of it, just a subtle note. And when you sip it, you sort of instantly think of the perfect pairing, which would be oysters or really any seafood in general, but definitely oysters would be my top recommendation for this. This is, again, a hidden gem. This is an $8 beauty, not to be missed. Moving along uh, to Alsace, which is also in France, um, we have the Trimbach Pinot Blanc. Pinot Blanc is, a, is an actual clone of Pinot Noir. Uh, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Pinot Bianco, uh, Pinot Grigio, all mutations of Pinot Noir. Pinot Blanc, and this is from the Trimbach house, which has been making wine since the early 1600s. So when a winemaker or a family has been making wine for that long, you can sort of trust that they know what they're doing and in terms of the quality. 
Um, Trimbach also makes a Pinot Gris and a Riesling, and they make a whole range of wines. But this is my sort of everyday favorite, um, Pinot Blanc. This is, this is gonna have maybe a little more pear, some stone fruit notes to it. Again, it will have some minerality, but this one's gonna be a little, I found almost like a, a rocky note to it. Maybe crushed gravel in there. Um, this is fantastic, also with seafood. Um, this is richer, a little bit rounder, but there's no oak on this, so it doesn't have too much more weight than the Muscadet, although very different personality-wise. Um, again, seafood, maybe like chicken dishes, um, salads, and pasta. I would say maybe um, clams and linguine would be beautiful for this particular one. This also is an under $15 find. It's Usually you can find it in the 12 to $15 price point. And the beautiful thing about both of these wines is they have the twist offs on them, which really allows for your wines to live uh, and stay much fresher for much longer. You can almost go twice the average shelf life once a wine has got uh, been opened with the twist off. Moving along to a rosé. I love rosés as well. This is a still rosé. So this is the Breca rosé. This is made from 100% Garnacha de Aragon. That's sort of the oldest clone of the Grenache Garnacha grape. Garnacha is one of those grapes that you can have red wines, white wines, and rosé wines. Um, so three different styles, and it grows prolifically all over the world. Garnacha from Spain and Grenache from France. This has a little more body to it. Grenache is a very playful grape. It's just so silky and elegant really refined. Um, again, if you have a problem with the color pink, uh, just close your eyes when you drink these beautiful wines because what I have found is pink doesn't have a taste. There's a lot of bright red fruits in here, nice acidity, it's very dry uh, and very fresh and refreshing, I suppose. Um, and we are in rosé season for sure. This particular one, the Breca, I think comes in usually anywhere between nine to twelve dollars overall. And we'll finish things up with an absolutely luscious, beautiful red. This is the Bastide Miraflora. This is from Domaine Lafage, one of my favorite producers of wine from France. This is from the Côte de Roussillon, uh, down in the Languedoc in southern France. This is a blend of Syrah and Grenache. This particular part of France is famous for its blends. Syrah tends to be a more brooding grape, I find. It's darker, more serious, and Grenache is the more playful grape, like I was just saying. So this has a lot of luscious black fruit notes to it, blackberries. You really just get a beautiful nose on that. It also has cedar, chocolate, and vanilla elements to it as well. Not overwhelming, but just subtle, and this would stand up really nicely with any red meats, uh, we're going into grilling season, certainly. Um, hopefully warm weather is here to stay. Uh, this is really nice with any kind of grilled meats, maybe grilled steaks, burgers, and sausages for sure. And the Bastide, I think, comes in usually between 11 maybe $12 to $14 for a price point. So again, um, high quality and great price point overall. So that does it for today's lineup of my five favorites. Um, tune in again, please, uh, for more of my uh, wine sessions from my dining room and thanks for joining.